Hello everyone and welcome back. So this is a new series that I'll be doing. I don't know the upload schedule. It really just depends on what is going on because if you can tell by the title, this is how we are planning and actually doing our witchy pagan wedding. So if you want to learn and experience planning a wedding with a witch, hello. So I decided to do this series for a couple reasons. The main one is that I could not find the videos that I needed so if I can't, if it doesn't exist, you make it, right? That's the general rule of thumb. And I just feel like there's not a lot of content on a pagan wedding. There are people posting their ceremonies, but that's about it. People talk about hand fastings as a thing you can include in your ceremony and like some of the history behind it and stuff like that. But it's it's not all of the, the planning that goes into a wedding. And when you try and look at the wedding planner, people, it's a little overwhelming. Because you see, I was never one of those girls that had planned their wedding since they were eight. I was busy celebrating Halloween when I was eight, and I never really had anticipated actually getting married. I hadn't dated for a long time. I dated early in middle school, and then nothing. Until I met my man, really. So, there was a long period of time where typically you'd be starting to mentally prepare for a wedding. And I didn't really want to plan a wedding until I had my partner in mind because I want them to be involved. And so now that me and my partner are planning on getting married, it's now time to plan a wedding. And it's very overwhelming. And we have watched Father of the Bride so many times because now it kind of makes sense. And some of those costs, I'm just like, oh, that'd be kind of cheap though. <laughs> like, that show was from the 90s. It's now the 2020s. So it's been a minute and like, Weddings are one of the most expensive things that I really didn't anticipate being as expensive as they are. With everything in mind, I just decided to document how our wedding goes and planning it and all of the things. We're not necessarily doing things traditionally, but it's not also going to be so witchy and so pagan that it makes people who aren't in our community uncomfortable. We're just kind of playing it how we are. We're witches, but we don't shove it down people's throats. And also, things that we're not doing traditionally, like he hasn't officially proposed um, because he's been waiting for money to kind of work that self out and all of that. And yeah, rings are expensive. So he has like agreed to marry me, but I don't think it's like the official like, will you marry me, honey? Like I've been like, we're getting married, right? <laughs> like you're cool if this is the path we go down because I like where I work. I like my coworkers. I don't really feel like changing jobs right now. And if we don't get married, that's what's gonna happen. And he's like, well, you're happy and I want you to be happy. So yeah, let's just do it. Not officially like, let's get married, but it's fine. We've been together, it'll be five years this summer. We've lived together for most of that time. We have shared loans and things. We're basically married without the certificate, okay? It's not gonna like be such a huge change. We're not moving out, getting our own place. We're just getting a paper so that I can get on his insurance and I get to wear a pretty ring and say that I'm married. Cause it feels weird to always refer to him as my boyfriend because he's more than that to me. I'm just kind of sick of calling him my boyfriend. I'd rather call him my husband cause that's really more of the role he plays. So with all of that backstory in mind, this is planning our witchy pagan wedding. Now, I'm going to have different topics that I want to discuss because again, planning your pagan wedding, it's way more involved than just the hand fasting, which I feel like so many people get caught up on. Even just the ceremony itself, not even just the hand fasting part of it, I feel like that's where like the conversation ends. When in reality, when you're planning a witchy wedding, there are so many things involved. Are you gonna do traditional white dress? Because you could look at the symbolism for that. What kind of stone are you using? Are you gonna use a diamond? Or are you gonna go with a different stone? Are you looking at the symbolism for all of those? Your color scheme for your wedding. Total witchy thing, color magic, do it. Venues, are you picking like a woodsy outdoor place and all of the things that come with it? And picking your meals and the magical associations with it. There's so many things outside of just the ceremony and the saying of your vows to your partner that goes into a witchy wedding and nobody really talks about that. So here I am, let us discuss over the next few months because it's gonna take some time to get married. We're planning it this summer. 
So this is just going to be an ongoing series. I don't know how often the uploads are going to be because it depends on what we're doing. <laughs> but I am going through this and I figured there really isn't any content because I've looked and I can't find it. You kind of have to weasel your way around like, oh, color magic. Okay, well, I mean, I've been a witch for so long. I know my colors. But like putting a, you know, wedding spin on it, it's a little different, you know? And picking out your ring. What stone are you going to use? I had to go to my books to figure it out because if you Google that, like, nobody knows what they're talking about. They're just like, oh, you mean, like, the setting and, like, the style? And you're like, no, like, what are the magical meanings for these stone types that you will typically find in most, like, you know, jeweler stores? If you go to Etsy and stuff like that, sometimes they'll list those because a lot of those are run by witches and pagans and people who are aware of the community. But if you run over to your local Jared or Shane company or Fred and Meyer Jewelers, whatever, if you go to one of those stores, like, they don't necessarily have a pagan on site to be like, oh yes, the magical properties are these. Like, that's not a thing. And some people might want to get their rings at like a local witchy shop and that's great. But if you want to go traditional wedding ring and spend the absorbent amount of money that they are, because oh my god, ours are expensive, you know, look into it a little bit. You know, like, we're gonna talk some color stuff. Um, I just, I feel like there's so much more into wedding planning with a witchy side that we just don't talk about. So if it's not there, make it. So here we are. So this is the intro to the series, and I will talk with you guys about all of the things that come up and just kind of also be, I guess, kind of vlog style, because it is our wedding specifically. It's not for, like, everyone, <laughs> but this is just how we're doing ours. So I figured I would give some tips and tricks of somebody who has absolutely no idea what they're doing and just figuring out as we go. Thank you so much for coming along for this series. Again, it'll be going probably for the next, I don't even know, eight, 10, 12 months, something. I don't know. I don't know how long it's gonna take. Sometime in the summer, we're getting married. So we'll see how long that takes to happen and all of the planning and stuff that goes into it. So I hope to see you guys there. And if you are also planning a witchy wedding, I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. And until next time, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all soon.